Hello, welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 22, Method Hiding in C Sharp. In this session, we will learn method hiding and invoking hidden base class members. Let's look at an example. In the previous session, we have actually created an employee base class and we have created two child classes, part-time employee and full-time employee, inheriting from the employee base class. Okay, so if you haven't watched my previous session on inheritance, I would strongly encourage you to do so before watching this video session. All right, so I have an employee class, the base class, where we have first name, last name, and print full name method within the base class. Now let's go ahead and create a part time employee class which inherits from the employee class. So part time employee inheriting from employee class and similarly let's go ahead and create a full-time employee class which also inherits from employee class okay now if I have to go ahead and create a part-time employee object or a full-time employee object I can do so f full-time employee FTE equals new full-time employee and from inheritance we know that if a class derives from a base class all the um, you know all the code that's present in the base class is also available to the child class so that concept enables us to initialize this full-time employee objects first name and last name so first name equals let's say full-time and FTE dot last name equals maybe employee and let's say I want to print this employee's full name we can call the print full name method okay similarly if I have to go ahead and create a part-time employee I can do so but I have to use the part-time employee object so part-time employee is equal to new part-time employee we need to change the reference variable name part-time employee PTE is equal to new part-time employee and we can say part-time employee dot first name equals part-time and part-time employee dot last name equals employee and part-time employee dot print full name. Now if we go ahead and run this as you might expect what's going to happen it will print the full-time employee and part-time employee names. Okay so which is expected. But now let's say my manager told me, all right, a full-time employee name printing is fine, but by looking at the name, I should be able to tell whether he's a part-time employee or a full-time employee. So if, if it is a part-time employee, then I want a hyphen contractor appended to his name so that just by looking at the list of employee names, I can figure out who is a full-time employee and who is a part-time employee. Okay, so to do that, what we can do is, okay, in my full time in my part time employee i can go ahead and provide a full name print full name function but look at this when we do that this part time employee class is actually inheriting from employee base class which has already got a method called print full name in my derived class also i'm having print full name method now if i do that what happens this method will actually hide this method Okay, so when I say part time employee dot print full name, what happens is it invokes this method and not the parent class method. Okay, so what did we say? We wanted in the output, you know, hyphen contractor bird appended to the end of the name. So we can say contractor. Fine. Now, with this change, if we go ahead and run this, what's going to happen? for part-time employee hyphen contractor we get that as expected now look back the code look at this there is a green squiggly underneath that print full name function what does that indicate that indicates that and if you look at the uh, warning message there the green squiggly actually indicates a warning so what is this warning about it is saying that in the part-time employee class the print full name is hiding the inherited print full name this method from this employee we have inherited that but since this method is here it is hiding that okay so use the new keyword if hiding was intended 
okay if you intended to hide this method then use a new keyword okay so it's just alerting the developer all right we you already have a printful name in the base class okay and you have a printful name in the derived class as well which will effectively hide the base class method if your hiding is intentional then use the new keyword okay so we can go ahead and use the new keyword so the moment we do that and then if i go ahead and run this once again so what's going to happen the output is the same except that we don't get that warning anymore okay so basically if you want to hide a base class member then you use the new keyword okay that's perfect okay now let's say okay i have hidden the base class member so anytime i say child class object dot that method it only calls the child classes method but then let's say i want to for some reason call the base class method okay in spite of me hiding the base class method i want to be in a position to call the base class method how do i do that there are several ways to do that one simple way of doing that is actually to use the base keyword so in my child class instead of doing this if you want to call your base class method what you can do is you can use the base keyword dot print full name and the moment you do that base refers to the employee class look at this the intelligence shows that and when i say print full name so look at the intelligence it says employee dot print full name so you can use the base keyword to call the hidden base class member that's one way so if i go ahead and run this now you should look at the output part time employee without that hyphen contractor proving that we are using the base class print full name method okay so that's one way what's the other way the other way is actually to typecast if you remember in part 3 i think we spoke about you know data type conversions and we used a typecast operator similarly what we can do is we can use the typecast operator and convert this part time employee object to be of type parent and remember you know inheritance concept in the inheritance chapter that we have discussed you know a child class is specialization of the of its base class okay so which means a child class has got all the capabilities of the base class plus you know whatever is special to that child class it's just like a gynecologist you know a gynecology is a specialization whereas general surgeon is you know a a general surgeon so a gynecologist can do the, the you know roles and responsibilities of a general surgeon plus gynec okay so similarly your part time employee can fulfill all the responsibilities of the employee class okay so that fact allows us to perform a cast on this object so that it can behave as a parent class okay so how do i do that instead of saying directly pte dot printful name what i can do is all right i have this parent uh, part time employee object what i want to do now is use the typecast operator and convert that to be of type employee and on this converted object i want to go ahead and call the print full name method now if you look at the intellisense here print full name it's saying employee dot print full name so employee base class employee classes print full name method will be called so if i go ahead and run this now we should get part time employee without that hyphen contractor proving again that the base class hidden method is called okay so this is one way and another way which is essentially similar to the same thing but doing it with a different syntax is that you know i can say okay so instead of this we can say pte dot printful name now you know that if we do this and run this program what's going to happen it's going to bring up the you know child class printful name method but we wanted to call the base class printful name method and to do that instead of using um a child class reference variable i can use the parent class reference variable now remember the fact that a child class object can fulfill all the responsibilities of a parent parent class so that fact again allows us to al assign an object okay an object of child type to a reference variable of type parent okay now look at this this pte is actually an object of type employee and employee object dot printful name will call the parent class printful name method so if i go ahead and run that look at that part time employee 
without that hyphen contractor again proving that the hidden base class member is called okay but you might be thinking okay can i do this part-time employee part-time employee pte is equal to new employee you can't do this this will give you a compiler warning because an employee object cannot fulfill all the responsibilities of a of a part-time employee so this is not possible but vice versa is possible a child class you know a parent class reference variable can point to a child class object whereas a child class reference variable cannot point a parent class object okay so keep that in mind because this forms the foundation for understanding the next concept which is polymorphism parent class reference variables can actually point to child class objects in that chapter we will also discuss you know the primary difference between um, object reference variables and objects themselves okay but anyhow in this session we have seen that you know if you want to hide a base class member we use the new keyword if you don't use the new keyword okay the base class member gets hidden but you will get a compiler warning this is just to alert the developer okay if you i mean there is a base class member hiding happening if your hiding is intentional then go ahead and use the new keyword okay and uh, we have seen that there are different ways to invoke a hidden base class member from the derived class one is to simply use the base keyword the other one is to use the cast on the uh, chain type to be your parent type and then invoking the hidden member and the other way is actually making the parent class reference variable point to a derived class object and then saying parent class object dot that hidden member which again calls the base classes hidden method on this slide you can see additional resources for asp.net and c sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day